you like Netflix? You like Netflix? Go ahead. All right, we got about like 80% of the congregation in Westchester and online. Go ahead, put some emojis up there. Let me ask you this follow-up question. How many of you ever have binged on Netflix? Go ahead, you're in a safe place. You can, you can be free. So binging is what happens is the episode is so good for some of you that don't know. And at the end of the show, this little bar will come up and say, continue watching. And it's so good. They leave you with a cliffhanger and you click it and you're like, I really don't have time for this, but I need to know what happens. And then you find yourself then in the next episode doing the same thing. I think all of us know what that is about going through COVID and binging and stuff like that. Well, today I'm going to drop you into the gospel of Mark chapter 8, and that's exactly what's going on. Through Jesus' teaching trilogy, what amazing that happens is over three days that the multitudes are gathering around him, and he speaks all day. And as he speaks all day, they're like, we don't want to leave. And they're like, continue watching? Yes, we're going to stay another day. Continue watching? Yes, give another message. Yes, we've never heard anyone speak like this. We've never heard this revelation. We've never heard someone talk with so much authority. Yes, yes, yes. And matter of fact, they go three days in this teaching that they even forget to eat. Now, guys, that's got to be amazing. And full disclosure, it makes me a little insecure as a communicator. Three days and they haven't even eaten and I'm wrestling with trying to keep people's attention for 27 minutes and all you're thinking about is lunch and what you're going to have. And then from time to time, I had people fall asleep during the message. I try not to take it personal, but I mean, I can see God working, but the one person's like, and I'm just like, oh, so I'm tempted. One time I may do it, 19 years. I haven't done it yet. I'm tempted if someone falls asleep during the message just to go, excuse me, sir. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes, yes. Can you just wake up? Yes. Would you stand and lead the congregation in prayer right now? You're like, pastor, you wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. Maybe. I don't know. This is exactly what's going on with Jesus in the gospel of Mark chapter 8. This Netflix special that they can't seem to get enough of. Now, warning, this is a long text alert. You ever get a text and someone puts way too much in a text? You're like, actually, that should have been an email. That's what today's message is. And so I want all of you to help me out, both our locations, and even online, in your kitchen, wherever you are, just stand up. Not if you're driving, but if you just stand up at all of our locations. And we're going to read through this because there's no other way to explain it or communicate what's going on in this Netflix special from the Gospel of Mark chapter 8. Jesus said this. If you see some words highlighted, help me out, say it loud and proud today. Jesus said, I have what I have. I have what I have compassion for these what people. Can we just thank Jesus for that? That this is his motivation. He genuinely has compassion for each and every one of us, no matter what we're going through today. Jesus loves you. He cares. And it moves the heart of heaven. Whatever you're carrying today, he has compassion for you. So he has compassion for this multitude, but it's for specific because they've already been with me three days and they have nothing to eat. If I send them home hungry, they'll collapse on the way. But some of them have come a long distance. His disciples answered, but we're in this remote place. Can anyone get enough bread to feed them? Let's read on. And Jesus answered this way. How did he answer? Let's say it again. How did, what did he say? He said, how many loaves do you have? How an interesting question. And then he goes on. It's, they said seven, they replied. He told the crowd to sit down on the ground. And when he had taken the seven loaves, he'd given thanks. He blessed it. And then he broke it. We're going to talk more about that next week. He blessed it. And then he broke it. And he gave them to his disciples to distribute to the people. And they did so. The people ate and were what church? And were How many of you know today, when Jesus feeds you, you always come away satisfied? How many know today that Jesus speaks to us where he says, man shall not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God, 
the Father. How many know that Jesus said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God? And that Word was the Lord Jesus Christ and was the light of men. When Jesus speaks to us, he speaks to us not as Hollywood can speak to us. He speaks to us not as the government can speak to us. He speaks to us not as the news would speak to us, not as the economy. He speaks to the deepest desires of our soul. And when something hits you in here that your wife can't, your husband can't, your parents can't, no other relationship can, but Jesus can. And when he speaks, you're satisfied like, oh, that is amazing. Can we just give Jesus praise for that? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I also think this, not just on the spiritual, they were satisfied. I think Jesus might have been a little bit Italian. I know he's Jewish, but he doesn't want to leave anybody going home without being full. At the word, the disciples picked up what? They picked up seven basketfuls of broken pieces that were what? I told you he was Italian. Yeah. Mm. On Sundays, I grew up thinking that Italian was Chef Boardee. I met my babe, Mamacita woman, and I go over to her house. They're Italian. And their grandma from Sicily would cook in this pot and meatballs and sausage and gravy. Can I get an amen? And it would cook for like hours and hours. And I'm like, wait, I had Italian in a can. Now I'm having this. This is amazing. And then they would send me home with just some little leftovers. And I'm like, I've got to marry into this family. About 4,000. That project managers... That administrators, that all you wedding planners, 4,000 people fed that day. And after that, they sent them away. Story's over, right? The plot clots. The Pharisees, you remember these guys, the religious elite, they couldn't stand Jesus. They came and they began to question Jesus to test him, and they asked him for a what? Give us a sign from heaven, Jesus. And he, what he? How irritating do you have to be that Jesus and God the Father would think it'd be appropriate to put in the scriptures, not that just he sighed, but sighed deeply. Not just <sighs> frustrated. <sighs> Dude. <sighs> really? No, this was it. (sighs) Has anyone ever been there with somebody? Don't do this right now. Has anyone ever been there? You're just like, enough, I've had it up to here. Why does this generation always ask for what? Truly, I tell you, what? No sign sign will be given to you. No soup for you. No sign for you. Then he left them. He got back into the boat. He crossed to the other side. And the disciples had what? rut row, they've forgotten to bring bread except for what? One loaf they had with them in the boat. Jesus said what? I want to ask you a question today, church. How do you think his delivery was with that? He just came through not just a sigh, but a deep sigh. And do you think he just was as nice, tender, calm, Tone. Hey guys, just a heads up. Hey, just just want you to know. Um, we're just moving forward. Let's just be careful. Or do you think his delivery was different? You think it was a little more intense? I'm gonna encourage you to give the best delivery you can of intensity right now and say it again. Jesus said, What? Be careful. That's good. Be careful. Jesus warned them and watch it. Watch out. 
Whoa, 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 what, what's, what's going on? Watch out for the yeast of the Pharisees and that of Herod. They discussed this with one another and said, is it because we have no bread? Aware of their discussion. Jesus is always aware of our discussion. He said this, Jesus asked them, why are you still talking about having no bread? Do what church, do what? Come on, Northway, what do you, what do you still not see or understand? Are your what? Hearts hardened. Are your hearts hardened? That's a little, like, Jesus is coming in hot. He's coming, whoa, 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 what? This is all because we just forgot it's the bread? Are your hearts hardened? Do you have, what? Do you have eyes, but you fail to see, and ears, but you fail to hear? And don't you remember? Remember what? When I, what? When I broke, remember we're talking about that next week, when I broke the five loaves for the 5,000, how many baskets of pieces did you pick up? They said 12. So Jesus has actually did this before. This wasn't his first miracle. And he said this. Now, how many baskets did you pick up? They said, 12, they replied. And when I broke the seven loaves for the 4,000, how many baskets of pieces did you pick up? They answered, seven. He said to them, do you still not understand? Let's pray. Father, thank you for the house of God, the word of God, the spirit of God. Father, give us a revelation from heaven, from the Holy Spirit. Fill your people, God. May they be satisfied challenge us, encourage us, strengthen us according to your word. Go through each and every seat, God, and speak only how you can, Holy Spirit, to every person created in your image. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. Have you ever been in a situation where you have believing, you've been believing God, you've been trying, you're doing your best, you're doing everything that you know to do, and you just find yourself frustrated? It doesn't seem like Jesus is working on your timetable. What's very irritating sometimes, it seems like other believers, they, they seem to be having breakthroughs after breakthroughs, but almost it seems like you're stuck, and maybe you're stuck in a season. God, I've been asking you, I've been having these requests, I'm believing, I'm doing my best, God. I'm spending time with you. Uh, I'm, I'm doing my best to quote scripture. I'm, I'm just doing my best to believe God. And it just seems like the miracle is delayed. It seems like nothing seems to be happening. Well, I believe that God's going to give us compass questions from this text in this Netflix special here of Jesus teaching over the next three weeks. We're going to stay in this text, and these compass questions, I believe, will help all of us map our miracle to see where we are at. Wouldn't that be awesome? And so today, the question is, what do you see? What do you see? Have you ever been in a conversation with somebody and they come at you and they ask so many questions and they're coming at you kind of so hot and so intense and you find yourself just responding because you're not tracking with them and you just respond, uh-huh, yeah, sure, right, Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm tracking. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Right. Of course. Absolutely. And all you got in your mind is how quickly you can get this conversation over so you can just walk away because the reality is you have absolutely no clue what they are even talking about. Has that ever happened to anybody else? All right. Apparently just me. This happens all the time in my relationship with my wife. She can be talking and she, it's not, it's not, Hey, don't, don't like, don't stone me or anything. I'm just like, we've been married 33 years. We're good. It's all secure. But she'll just start talking. And I'm just like, uh-huh. Right. Uh-huh. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh -huh. Roger that. Uh-huh. Sure. Absolutely. Yes. You're right. And so here's the thing is, I, I, uh, that's with Debbie. Sometimes with my kids, I got to go, whoa, 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 slow down. I, I don't understand the words that are coming out of your mouth. You're talking so fast, Natalie. Devin, you're, 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 you're like Mr. Google. I'm like, I've been listening. I just, I, I don't understand what you're saying. But you kind of play it off and you play it off because you just don't understand. This is exactly where the disciples are. And this puts us in the disciples' sandals. They have no clue at what Jesus is even referencing. They have no clue what he's even talking about. This loaded question of be careful, watch out, that you don't become like the yeast of the Pharisees. Be careful. 
I don't think they got to be thinking, what, what, what? He's talking about bread, and then all of a sudden he goes from bread to biology. He's talking about math and how many loaves do you have? And I don't know. We had seven, we had seven now, and you took seven, then you had seven left over, and then you fed 4,000. But before that, you did this, and you had, oh, what, five loaves, and then left over, you had 12. Why'd you do the math different? But you fed 5,000, and now we just have one, and we didn't bring the leftovers. And so Jesus is, but then he's talking about biology, and I don't have eyes and apparently don't have ears. I don't know what he's even talking about. Uh Uh-huh, sure, right, Jesus. Uh I don't even know. Let me act this out in a different way. Because when I read this text, this is what I hear. I hear it in Italian. Bread! You have bread! Did you forget the bread? You forgot the bread! Peter, you are supposed to bring the bread! We had a seven baskets of leftover. There were crumbs from the bread. We could have made our meatballs. And you forgot the bread. Jesus is mad. You forgot the bread. He's ticked off. He tells us we're like the Pharisees. Bread, you want bread? I don't know. We had seven. We had seven leftover. He fed the 4,000. All of a sudden, I'm Italian. Now I'm German. I don't know how my accent has changed like this. Bread. Before we had 5,000, he had 5,000. He fed 5,000. And now, here we are. You say bread, you forgot the bread. We only have a one loaf. What are you going to do? Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. It's amazing how that accent changed from, I don't know, all those different dialects. But Jesus leaves them with this cliffhanger. It's, it's like he's, I'm done. I'm done. And have you ever had this in a relation? I'm done. I'm not talking about this anymore. I'm not explaining this anymore. I'm not going here on anymore. And he just says, do you still have eyes and you can't see? And do you still not understand? Drops the mic, walks away, no explanation. And the disciples are like, What just happened? I've been asking Jesus the same thing. Jesus has had me in this text, and full disclosure, I almost canceled this series called Dream Again. This close. And I went to Jesus, and I'm like, I I don't even understand. Jesus, why are you equating your followers with the Pharisees. They're not even in the same league. What are you talking about all this math? What, what is really going on? What, what is all this? And I almost canceled this series because I'm the type of person, I, I'm the type that the way God's wired me. I love creativity and I love enthusiasm and I love um, inspiration. I love people that way. I love movies that way. I love life that way. And when life and people and movies aren't that way, I'm tempted to disengage. I think all of us would agree over the last 19 months, there hasn't been much enthusiasm. There hasn't been much inspiration out there. And there certainly hasn't been much creativity. Can I get an amen? Does anybody look out in this world and go, you know what? I really came away inspired today, faced another day, positive. It's just not out there. And I'm like, so I'm like, God, we need to pump the brakes on this because people aren't feeling it. I'm not feeling it. it, it it's just, I had this, I had this message. I had this series, like I, I felt like you were leading me to it. And then all the stuff happens in the news. It just keeps more bad news and more bad news. And what, 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 what is going on? And I'm like, Jesus, we're just, uh, God, we're just not feeling it. Maybe we'll tail it. And the Lord told me this. I don't want them to feel it. I want them to see it. I don't want them to feel it. I want them to see it. You see, the Pharisees, what they were stating, Jesus Jesus, show us a sign. 
Jesus, show us a sign. Give us a sign, Jesus. What they were saying is they wanted to turn Jesus into a genie. It was about what they could get from Jesus, not what they could learn from Jesus. I don't want to learn from you, Jesus, but I do want to take from you. I'll take your miracles, but don't take my life. Be careful. Watch out that we do not become like the Pharisees. I don't want my people to feel. I want them to see. It's interesting because when I talk about God and my relationship with him, and I do frequently, and I'll talk, and I'll talk about the Holy Spirit when he's doing my life, I'm like, and this will happen when I'm talking. I'm like, oh, my gosh, did you, did you, see? The, the, the hair will stand up on my arms, and I'm like, I just got chills. I just got chills. And I do that often because many times the Holy Spirit will manifest himself in that type of way. But have you ever found yourself where you are maybe chasing a feeling and then the emotion is gone? What do you do then? What do you do when you just can't feel it any longer? What do you do when you've gone to camp and you've gone to camp and you've got, Pastor, I'm so fired up. I'm so jazzed. I'm so, I'm on fire for God. And now I'm back at school now, but I don't feel it anymore. What do you do when you came May 23rd and it was Pentecost Sunday and several hundred people got baptized in the spirit and you began to like speak in the heavenly language and did that by faith and now time is passing. You're like, Pastor, I, I don't even try to do that. And your minds try to talk you out of that. I just don't feel it anymore. What do you do when you say, Pastor, I, I was one of those people, a hundred people that just went public through baptism and God's when I came up out of the water, I just felt so free my old life is gone and my new life is here. And it was just a, a month or so ago and I, I don't feel it anymore. Pastor, what do I do when it's not my special singer and the special worship person and it's my favorite song and they haven't sung my favorite song in a long time and I just don't feel it any more. Pastor, I'm working in and I, I've got all these different stuff coming in. I've got responsibilities. My kids are off to school and now there's all these different regulations. I'm just trying to figure it out. Everything just keeps changing so fast. And when it comes to my relationship with God, it's kind of just back burner. I'm just doing everything I can do to hold on. I'm, just not, I'm not feeling it anymore. I used to serve. I used to give. I used to tithe. I used to do all these things. I used to hunger for God's word. His presence meant everything to me. But if I'm transparent today, kind of a little spiritually numb. I don't feel it anymore. It's not about what we feel. It's about what we see. I've been married 33 years to this babe aroma down here. We have walked through death. We have walked through cancer. We have walked through church hurt, through betrayal. We have walked through wounds just like anybody else. We have walked through this fallen world together. And what I've discovered over 33 years, it's not the infatuation of, oh, hello, buddy. Apparently, she's Irish. Hello, buddy. <laughs> so good to see you. Hey, sugar bear, snooky wookums, love dove, sugar bug. It's not all of that. It's a deeper level of no, you never have walked out on me. You have been with me. We've been on this journey together, together. And the love and respect and admiration I have for Debbie Crumines is no equivalent to when I first started dating her, proposed to her, and married her. Why? Maturity comes not through a feeling, but from seeing things differently.
And I just wonder, in the last 19 months, have there been times where, wait a minute, we're just on to the next miracle. Jesus, I, I, I need you for this. And certainly he can help us. And certainly he can do the impossible. And certainly he wants to encourage us to dare to dream. But could it be that he would share with his people? And not could it be. I know he's sharing this with his people. I know he wants us to get this revelation today. Before your next miracle, you're going to need the residue of your last miracle. Have you forgotten of what he did before? When Jesus said, I have compassion for these people, what are we going to do? It's not like he didn't know what they were going to do. I can't send them away without any food. And the disciples responded, how? We're out here in this barren wasteland. There's certainly no food here. You were just there with the 5,000. You were just there when he took five loaves and turned it into 5,000 and had 12 baskets left over. Why didn't someone come to Jesus and say, Jesus, I have a compassion. God, what, what, what do you want us to do? We have compassion. And Jesus would be like, yes, now you're cooking with gas. Now you're catching the vision. But no, they had forgotten. And I wonder, I just, just be real transparent with you is yesterday as I had time with God, I just broke and I broke. And I'm like, God, I look around at the miracles and I look at the evidence of what you've done. I look around at the signs and there's no way that, there's no way that nobody can tell me that God isn't real. There's no way that anybody can ever try to convince me that Jesus isn't real. There's no way. You just can't do it. Because I seen the evidence of God in my life over and over again from the restoration of myself and angry at God, cuss at God, never have anything to do with it. That God would even ask, consider for me to do this makes no sense to me. That God would restore my marriage, that God would restore my kids, that God would do all this. That, that we were in a dilapidated retail space and then we were like, God nudged us to move out. And they're like, where are we going to go? I don't know, but it's time to go. And we went out in faith. The landlord said, that, I'm going to jack your rent up by 50%. So we moved to a bar. Then we moved to a school. If we were in the bar, in the school during COVID, this church wouldn't be here. Do you know how many times this church has almost been out of business, but God, but God. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm just wondering today. I'm wondering today, are there some people here that you've almost been out of business? You've almost have not been able to make it. You almost said, God, I'm just completely through, but God. I'm wondering if there's some other people here today that say, man, it's just not a feeling. I know that God has been faithful and has been good to me. I know that God has restored me. I know that God has helped me. I know that when I didn't see a way somehow that God helped me through. I know that when I was at my deepest and my darkest depression and I was even considering self-harm and taking in my life, even in the deepest, darkest times, I couldn't communicate to anybody else. I know in my panic attacks and in my depression, but God, but God, but God, there was someone that could satisfy my soul, someone that could speak to me, someone that give me answers, and his name is Jesus Christ, and it is man shall not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of heaven. Somebody give Jesus Christ praise today. It's not about how we feel. It's about what we see. For we live by what? Faith, not by sight. Now, what faith is the assurance of things hoped for? The what? The conviction of things not seen. Open the eyes and open the eyes of what? Of our heart that we may be enlightened. It's not what you feel, it's what you see. And until you don't need a sign, but you take the bread of life and you get the word inside of you, not just that you know it, but then you meditate it. You imagine it. God, I hear what the doctor said, that my body is full of cancer. I hear they're just saying I just have weeks to live. But they don't know the great physician. And they don't know that it's not through till you say it's through. And I stand on the word of the living God because if we're gonna endure this life, we have to know the word of God. And I stand on your word and not on the doctors that by the stripes of Jesus 
and I see myself, I am whole, I am healed in Jesus' mighty name because by his stripes, not I will be healed at the healing service. I'm releasing and expressing my faith today. I am, harp- I am using one of the greatest gifts you've ever given me, my God-given imagination. I'm getting my mind into agreement with your word and I stand on this and I believe it and I receive it and then I open up my mouth in Mark 11, 23 and you said speak to that mountain and that mountain must move. It's not enough to pray. It's not enough to believe. You got to open up your mouth. So oh, I open up my mouth today with faith and I speak that Christ is bigger than cancer. I speak that Christ is bigger than COVID. I speak that Christ in the name of Jesus that depression has to bow in the name of Jesus that anxiety has to bow in the name of Jesus panic attacks have to bow in the name of Jesus I break every single stronghold in the name of Jesus I am whole I am free is anybody receiving the word today it's not what you feel it's not what you feel in maturity He's growing up and going, God, I don't have to feel it. I know it's true because you said it. And I'm standing on that word and I will not waver. I'm going to continue to state it and say it because it's not about what I feel. It's about what I see. How many would say, It's what I heard the Holy Spirit say. There's a difference from being close to Jesus and comfortable with Jesus. I don't think we're ever supposed to grow comfortable. I think the disciples were getting a little too comfortable. They were close. Got to be close, not comfortable. And Jesus was saying, watch it. We don't need a sign because God's been too good to us. The ultimate sign was the cross was Calvary. It's settled. He loves you. He's not mad at you. He's madly in love with you. We need a revelation of how much he really loves us. You don't have to walk in guilt. You don't have to walk in shame. You don't have to walk in anything like that. He knows everything you're battling. We come to him and just say, God, I just need your help today. Would you be courageous today and say, Pastor, God may be a little too comfortable I want to be close, but not comfortable. I I want my relationship with God. I don't need a sign. He's already done enough for me. Not that I don't need him in the future, need him now. I'm not so much into like, oh, you know, the miracles he can do and forget the miracle that he is. And so with that, if that's you today, would you just stand to your feet and say, the Holy Spirit's speaking to me. And I just want to kind of let Jesus know that today. I want to let Jesus know by standing, I'm grateful thankful and God you're speaking to me and I just I want to see you differently Lord Jesus we love you we bless your name we thank you for who you are Lord there's a remnant of revival that's happening there's no question about it but Father I pray that this house and i I've asked for forgiveness yesterday, God, and I just, but I just speak on behalf of the, your family. We just turn, we ask, but by standing, we're turning and saying, God, we don't want to miss that you're the miracle and not be just chasing the miracle worker. I love what the apostle Paul said. He said, I've started churches everywhere. I've, I speak in tongues more than everybody else. I've done, I, my spiritual resume is like crazy, but all that resume means nothing if I don't have the presence of God in this one thing, I count all that loss that I may know Jesus. What we're saying today, God, is we just want to know you, Jesus. Oh, there's nothing that compares to that, Father. We love you. We bless your name. Receive our worship in Christ's name. Amen. If you've never invited Jesus in your life, would you pray this prayer? Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you died on the cross and you rose again. I ask forgiveness for my sin, and I make you my Lord and Savior. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Help me to follow you the rest of my days. In Jesus' name, amen.
The Bible says you pray that prayer, all of heaven is celebrated, and so are we. Come on, make some noise. Thank <laughs> you.